We are back. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. Want to welcome back to the program, the national political correspondent for the Washington Post, author of the trailer, which you should all be reading. Um, Dave Weigel. Dave, I see you again. It's good to be here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, uh, let's talk about what you know we're seeing out there i think we uh tried to touch base uh in august after the um special election uh in in new york it's also part of the primary in new york's 19th let's just start there just briefly because this was supposedly a bellwether uh district it is um and i'm not as convinced it's as bellwethery for this special election as it will be in the uh the new 19th in new york i i i uh um i live up there um and have lived up there full time over the years i vote up in the 19th that district has changed a little bit uh since covid and i wonder um what your sense is of how much of a bellwether that was the uh, the Democrat, a guy named uh, Pat Ryan, won. He is a county supervisor over in one of the counties in that district. A fairly popular guy and a good candidate. Um, he will be running in the 18th. There's a different guy who's running in the 19th, but the same Republicans running in the new 19th in New York. I hope this isn't too complicated for people. But just as a general rule, what what did you take from that? It is very complicated. I mean, the, there was one debate between the Republican and the Democrat nominee in this current you know, district that's going away. They must have spent 15 minutes <laughs> describing the difference because one was running in the new seat, one was running in the old seat. Uh, but it was bellwether. You pointed out that it changed a lot. It changed because uh, thousands of people from New York City moved, relocated from uh, crowded apartments. I assume they're pretty crowded to larger houses in the Hudson Valley. So Democrats benefited from thousands of new voters uh, in this seat in places like Kingston and, uh, and New Paltz. It, it, the liberal towns got more liberal. Uh, but this was really a test of, of the Dobbs decision and how uh, the end of, of federal abortion guarantees, guaranteed rights were affecting uh, people even in blue states. So uh, it, Republicans wanted to be a bellwether before they lost it. Democrats always wanted to. I talked to Pat Ryan uh, early in July when they were kind of struggling for media attention, not money, but media attention, uh, that Republicans had a poll having been 15 points down, and he said, "Yeah, we're going to make this race a referendum on choice." So his first big TV ad was all about was about choice. He was a veteran; he linked that to fighting for choice. And you really have uh, seen this across the country in places. Now, suburb is like a a word that can get mangled and redefined. I mean, I don't think like, New Paltz is not really a suburb of anything, but generally places where uh, people have. Uh, been, you know, moving to the left since Trump got elected, where they were starting to walk back in 2021, voting voting for uh, you know Glenn Youngkin in Virginia. Those places you saw a kind of freezing, and then a move, and, and then a sort of a march back after the Dobbs decision. And the way a lot of Democrats put it to me is just that you know people will vote against bad things they don't like the government doing. But in this case, the the bad thing the government did, in their view, was what the Supreme Court did. So. You're not voting for Joe Biden to punish, uh, voting against Democrats to punish Joe Biden for for the Dobbs decision. You're voting against Republicans, and Republicans had for something they wanted for 49 years, just didn't have a good plan to respond to that. Apart from saying like, "Don't worry about it." I mean, that was the the strategy in New York was basically, "Hey, man, it's like New York. We're not gonna we're not gonna change the law here. Don't worry about it." How much has um, uh, what uh, Graham did? in raising this uh, abortion ban and um how much has that had ripple effects it, it, you know based upon y your sense uh, uh, out in the country you tour around you're you're reporting on this stuff how much has that sort of i don't know uh kept the wound fresh and from cauterizing as it were and um and then i guess the other question is like how much did these sort of uh immigration stunts by Abbott and DeSantis over the past week or two, sort of like, I don't know, it feels like Graham is on the news every day trying to to sort of like make it clear that he didn't make a mistake and everybody else is going, dude, stop it. You're making a mistake. <laughs> yeah, well, there are two tracks those are happening on. I think the, the Graham thing got attention. I mean, he announced it late notice. I think he announced it, uh, or Sean Handy announced it was coming the night before he gave this morning press conference. 
Uh, and, and so he, he ran that out there. Uh, that is, that is, I'd say manifesting mostly in paid advertising. So that's on the paid advertising track. You're turning on TV. Uh, I'm in North Carolina right now, uh, for a friend's wedding, but if you look turn on TV in Florida, turn on TV, anywhere the swing state sw- swing seat, Democrats are saying Republicans want a national abortion ban. They've been tying that to the Lindsey Graham thing saying, look, you know, let's discuss what happens if Republicans have a Senate majority. They really do want to pass this. The House majority, they really do want to pass this. And their leadership's not being honest with you. The, the, the Santa's thing, there's not as much paid advertising directly on that. So I don't know how it's affecting things yet. Uh, and also what DeSantis is doing is with something that had been happening, like a lower resonance from uh, Greg Abbott, mostly Greg Abbott for, for months, which is, which is this uh, taking it, not just migrants, but asylum seekers who arrive in Texas and shipping them to blue states where they're being resettled and kind of mocking the blue states for, for not being able to process them very quickly. Now that's, it's like, of course they can't probably, Texas has a bunch of border, has a ton of border uh, infrastructure, uh, border patrol agents, places, processing centers, detention centers, New York does not. Uh, but they were trying to prove this point. And the Sanders thing is such an odd story that I think it's, it's, it's extended beyond the life of the stunt because they're, you know, you've seen these questions today. Why is the governor of Florida routing migrant, uh, you know, asylum seekers in Texas who were going to just have appointments in other places, rounding them up and sending them to a different state to make a point? And the Martha's Vineyard thing, pure trolling. I mean, he'd been saying that that's kind of like a it really kind of manifesting into the real world a joke from like Fox News segments. Uh, that is a strange story that I think people is, is is reminding people of some immigration problems. But it's look like the. When you see immigration Republican at messaging, it's not just looking at these people climbing a fence. That's bad. Some of it is. Some of the some there's some people have the Tucker Carlson like they're taking our jobs argument. But it's usually look immigrants are coming in and that's bad because fentanyl because of drugs. Uh, humanizing who these people are and saying there are fifty people that you can profile and meet who have uh, uh, asylum stories who are fleeing Venezuela or fleeing countries. Uh, they're not drug traffickers. They're not. They're not going with you know packs of fentanyl under their under their arms. They're. This is a different story, and I don't know how it's going to affect things. It's because the paid messaging is border open drugs. That's the message. It's not border open nice guy from Venezuela fleeing uh, socialism. That has not been the story. But right. in Republic, I think John Chait's very good. Whatever people think of, him, are pointing this out. Just DeSantis exists even much more than Trump did in just a world of conservative media where no one saw a downside. Well, but that's, I think, who this is for, right? Like, this is yeah. not, uh, DeSantis is going to win a ele- re-election easily, most likely, in the fall. And so this is all about just building up his portfolio for 2024 with right-wing troll stunts. But, I mean, for me, I, I don't know how it, it, if it affects actually November at all. It's really just about him um, making his his file a bit fatter ahead of the primary cycle. I, I think he's peaking a little early, honestly, but um, but that's what this is about to me. Yeah, I think that it's, it's much easier to analyze as, as uh, something that makes sense to other Republicans. That's cool. I mean, you were saying it uh, just now and I was pointing to like if this really is like a uh, if you're watching TV and then and then the the like the Max Hedrum like the person that comes off the screen and starts addressing you, it's like hey aren't you angry and we're, we're actually doing that thing that we joked about on on this Fox segment last <laughs> night um, but yeah I don't think it means the same thing to to voters because there's a reason why just pure nativism nationalism build the wall politics was not a winner in America for a long time it's pretty complicated most Americans uh, see themselves as descendants of immigrants they'll talk about which generation they're from some sometimes. Uh, there and Republicans, I think, got very heady with how they were gaining with Latino voters, despite being the party of build the wall, uh, keep keep migrants out. So, but this part of the conversation is 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 more. Wouldn't it be awesome if we made mi- immigrants go to these blue states? Yeah, take that sanctuary set status. And that's not how most people see it. Like the, it's really the dr- the drugs and the crime thing. I mean, for that, that line Trump said in 2015, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing rapists, they're bringing crime. Look, that, he said it because that's powerful. Like the stories of you'll see TV ads where like uh, somebody got killed, their relative got killed by a drunk driver. And they'll say he wasn't even supposed to be here. That's one that that is what kind of when you're taking this from the Republican green room to the voters reality. That's what you do. Not this. Not just immigrants exist. Isn't it funny that liberals don't like when they're in their <laughs> backyard? That's do not you- how you win people. That's just how you like 
pro, you know, get get the B block of, of the 8 p.m. Fox show. I, I grew up in Worcester, so I, I have known about Martha's Vineyard since I was a kid. Um, my dad used to go and sleep on the beach there when he was, you know, 60, 70 years ago or something like that. Um, when it was just there was nobody there, apparently. But do people around the country know like what? It, does it mean anything to them or is that just sort of like an inside baseball for, you know, folks like DeSantis, who is what Ivy League? Uh, like, I mean, he's been up in that. He area. vacations at Nantucket instead of Martha's. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean but, like, but honestly, like, does it does it because it has a, like a feel of like Chicago politi- style politics, which I, when they were hammering uh, Obama with that, I was like, people don't remember have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> like, they're not like, you know. The, the San Francisco style politics that, that doesn't mean what it meant, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Does it right. th- does it resonate with people like it just seems like an odd like a stunt that is really geared more towards, you know, I don't know, the, you know, uh, Breitbart uh, folks just to sort of win them over or something. I think more so. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see this resonating the same the same way that all, all of the all the drug trafficking stuff resonates. Uh and, and that is always that is a worry. Like the left gets into this too. Like the, the definitely this I've seen we've seen this happen over the years. So the of people getting over their skis and, and all right, polls forget polls, but like people are are angry about uh, pol- police murdering people and getting away with it, and then going too far and turning it into. And that's why we need to abolish the police. Um, like the the right in the media is very good at polarizing the most far out there sounding left wing idea and not even giving their giving a space to debate it. Just saying okay. Well, this is we're all going to run away from this. You've not seen that from Republicans. They have a, they have a different space, and I think just it's so tantalizing the idea of humiliating the left with this morality test. Even when I mean, another point I've, I've seen a lot of people make: uh, if you're watching Fox, you might be under the impression all these migrants uh, were quickly deported. Like I think the New York Post cover says, "Deported." They were not deported. The words mean things. Deported means you're kicked out of the country. That was not what happened. They were processed to a different part of the immigration system. So, yeah, it does. It does become a problem for that voter who's not just drinking in Fox News all day. Just the way it's like there's information about uh, Republicans that the 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 MSNBC viewer doesn't use, but this is much more intense. Uh, and so I haven't seen it yet. I mean, I've been I've not seen ads develop this yet because. The idea that like America shouldn't be giving asylum to people is not as popular. And the overall idea I'd say, I'd say for Republicans is uh, this is an issue that Trump that uh, we poll great on and and immigration. The idea that there's an open border that Biden's failing that's a winner for us. So if we're talking about the winner for us, we're doing better than talking about a loser. Generally, that's true. But you can I mentioned police reform not to be glib and compare the two of them. But you can have an issue that's a winner for you and bungle it so badly that people turn against you. It happens all the time. All right. Well, let's get to some specific races because, um, I, well, I, I guess let's just start with, with that, with the house, just generally speaking, what, yeah. what's your sense of the, the opportunity for Democrats to hold the house at this point? It's still very, very tough for them to hold it. Uh, I think Democrats would be not happy but a, a, a scenario I've, some Democrats have said, if it's, if it's like a single digit GOP House majority and the Democrats run the Senate, you're going to have uh, Republicans unable to govern in the House fighting amongst themselves and Democrats confirming judges that'd be OK with that. So there's not many Democrats, except when I think they're like saying so to an interview or to donors saying they can still hold it because you need to basically they would need to hold um, every district that they have even under under the new map, under the new gerrymander, including about half a dozen that Trump won by some margin, that's very, very tough to do. I mean, that, that involves like holding uh, Southwest Wisconsin, which has been trending their way, where there's going to be higher public turnout. Uh, it involves like uh, uh, hold, holding on to the Iowa seat, which has been which is tough for them, which is like 50-50. Uh, there's just Ron DeSantis, who we keep talking about, <laughs> like he, if it's like a, single digit house majority for Republicans, they will probably credit him because he redrew three seats in Florida that should have been competitive or gone democratic for Republicans and they're off the map. So they need to, they need to basically pitch a perfect game where Republicans can, can bat like 200 and, and win. That's the, that's the house picture. 
Um, they have an advantage, though, because Republicans, I, I think they haven't overextended as much as Democrats did in the past. But I was just writing about some of this today. And like the full Republican target list includes places that voted for Biden by 20 points. Like in the summer, they were thinking and like even even after Dobbs, where the polling came back, they're like, well, these suburbs are so gone. We can win everything. I don't think they're going to be able to win everything. They're competing for a lot of stuff where the if voters regress to the mean, Democrats are probably going to come in at like 205 House seats. But I don't think they can. I It would be one of the greatest you know upsets of all time. But we, we've lived through probably five of those uh, right. if they hold it by any margin at all. All right. Well, so let's turn to the Senate. Um, the I guess the. Well, it, it feels like there's uh, maybe a half a dozen um, really contested races that are going to be consequential. North Carolina is is one of those. This is a possible pickup for uh, Democrats, um, possible pickup in Pennsylvania, possible pickup in Wisconsin. Um, there's a tight defense in Nevada and in New Hampshire, um, maybe arguably Colorado. Um, what, what, give me your sense of those races. And if there's another one that you're looking at that you think is going to be uh, relevant as well. Uh, that's, that's a, a pretty solid, solid list. I mean, I would add Ohio, which I was a skeptic about. Ohio like, as we're, well. we're, we're yeah, watching sorry. a few things, uh, as the race get closer, things the candidates can control things they can't control. So I think the candidates can control is, are, am I going to be any good at a debate? Uh, and so, with the Pennsylvania race, I, I think it's a little more complicated than this because the Republican messaging is, is mostly about crime and they think they've got, got a, got an in there because of hyping, hyping the fear of crime. Uh, but if John Fetterman shows up and is fine in a debate, uh, he's been winning. He's, he's, he's far more personally liked than Dr. Oz. It looks like he not only survived a stroke, but he can do the job. Uh, I feel like they've, that, that one the Republicans are very pessimistic about, uh, and you mentioned Nevada. I'd say it, it's kind of a late state. You know, if you're watching an election night, it's closing at 11 o'clock. But that's one. If Republicans are not clearly winning that state because it's, you've got a lot of white voters without college degrees, you have Latinos who are more working class who've been trending Republican. If Democrats can hold on to those races, like the Senate race especially, uh, I don't. I think Republicans are going to be way underperforming the whole election. And that's not stuff like the candidates can run, but uh, Catherine Cortez Masto herself cannot have conversation with a hundred thousand, you know, Obama to Trump voters, and convince them all in one go, please come back to me. Um, that's one of those races where uh, one, I mean, really any state that's less than Trump plus 20, they are saying, look, uh, yeah, we've made some mistakes. Inflation is too high, et cetera, et cetera, but it's getting better. And do you really want these people to take over? Um, the version of the argument they made in 2010 didn't, didn't work then, but, Look, the economy is objectively just better for people now than it was in 2010. And, and the Republican brand is the Trump brand. It's not the Tea Party. It's not something new. It is, do you really want this particular party back in power? Um, so I think that's that's what you're watching. And Ohio's stranger because Ryan has been just separating from the rest of the Democratic ticket in a pretty unpopular state by bashing Vance as kind of a corporate tool and a right winger and trying to reignite some of the there's just hundreds of thousands of democrats turned republicans in that state who just did not vote for any democrat in the last few years uh that one i'm watching to see if uh are there Dem is is the republican branding so bad in some places that where they should just automatically be flipping people that they're not uh but yeah nevada i wish it was earlier in the night <laughs> like nevada new hampshire if you wanted to look a little closer because new hampshire had its primary last week uh republicans nominated I think it's safe to say the anti-establishment candidates. That's like the brand everybody wants. It's kind of it's kind of jargon, but in each each race, Senate um, and both House races, national Republicans and, and the governor and Governor Sununu endorsed a candidate who they said could win, and the voters said nope, and they nominated somebody more right wing. Uh, so if New Hampshire is like competitive, like uh, if, if Democrats are not holding both uh, House seats and they're not holding that Senate seat, like great, great net Republicans, they're probably going to win a ton of stuff that we didn't see coming. Um, all right, let's just go back and in uh, in in New Hampshire, I think um, uh, Bolduc, the uh, the Senate candidate, got yeah. sort of um, benefited in his primary, I guess, from like uh, some Chuck Schumer spending. 
Uh, I think, you know, the classic he's too conservative for New Hampshire type of situation is is my understanding. Uh, and that may have like helped him in that primary. Uh, and then, you know, um, certainly the person that uh, Maggie Hassan wanted to run against. Um, but, let, but just going back to Nevada, it feels to me like my over the years that Nevada always looks like it's going to be tighter than it was, at least with Harry Reid. Like it, it looked like Harry Reid was going to lose, I think, like two different times. And he comes out and he wins big. Does that dynamic, whatever Harry Reid did in that state, does that still exist uh, now that he's he's passed on? I mean, or is that a function of like union strength there? What is it that 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 feels to me like Nevada ends up uh, breaking for Democrats more often than than it than it appears it's going to? Yeah, you, yeah, you mentioned the union strength. It's really that. It's that uh, because Harry Reid was trailing in polls in 2010. is like the classic example. Then he wins. Uh, there were polls having Trump ahead. He wins. Uh, in tw- uh, sorry, and 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 uh, the the race just kind of breaks away from him and goes to Democrats in 20. It, it is the union support. It's also they're back to normal canvassing and normal campaigning after they couldn't do it completely in 2020. So the hunch there for Democrats has always been. If we're tied, you know, spot us a few points because we have this incredible ground game. And uh, the they have it even when Republicans are, when they're in good shape or they're bad shape. And this is a weird moment for, for Nevada Republicans. They've nominated a bunch of far-right candidates, far-right candidate for Secretary of State. Uh, Adam Laxalt would be seen as far-right, except he, you know, was Attorney General for one term. Um, so he's seen as the established candidate. But they have... They have a pretty far right Republican crew, jump a bunch of candidates. They, the party there has been through a lot of infighting, and they basically say, "Look, we're will, we're will, we are well organized across the state, and they are not. And you can give us the advantage for that reason." That's basically their theory. It's been right since really since twenty uh, two thousand eight. Um, they had one bad year in twenty fourteen. Every other year, they have been able to outperform the rest of the party around the what country. About- I should say the rest of the state parties. What's your sense um, in terms of Wisconsin? Yeah, that's another one where you have a really terrific Democratic Party uh, led by Ben Wickler. You have a, a Republican Party that I think has lost some of its st- uh, steps since Scott Walker was governor. Uh, but it is incredibly divided, and it's, it's, it's been balanced in for a long time with Democrats doing really well in Madison, really well in Milwaukee, um, competitive in sort of the northeast of the state and uh and appleton or like around the lakes uh but then winning southwest wisconsin and they have been losing ground in southwest wisconsin that's the one i mentioned where it's tough for the party to hold it congress uh but they've been gaining ground in the milwaukee suburbs and you have uh johnson who has won these elect two elections in the state done well in those suburbs but done done worse in 20 uh in 2016 the party's been losing some ground there the question there is, can Democrats make up ground in the suburbs uh, if they're losing it in, in southwest Wisconsin? And the problem for them uh, has been Republicans are just, uh, I must want to say obsessed, but, you know, they get an issue, you run on it. Uh, their campaigns are very, very focused on crime and specifically uh, the, both the, the riot in Kenosha uh, in t- 2020 uh, and this un- totally unrelated uh, criminal uh, escaping police and driving his car into Waukesha parade and mur- and keep murdering a bunch of people actually they're killing a bunch of people uh the, re- the republican message in that state has been basically hey that's democrats fault murders and riots that's democrats fault and if you're a suburbanite come on do you want them to do that again that's kind of what they've been doing in minnesota any state where they were they've kind of retold the story of 2020 as the democrats let all of our cities burn down they'll let your city burn down too uh so that's that's the question there is that is that compelling enough for these suburban voters who've been kind of grossed out by their Republican craziness in mean, Wisconsin nonstop year and a half of Republicans throwing tantrums and investi- investigating the election. Democrats are very confident that the Republican brand has been badly damaged by just how obsessed they are with trying to overturn 2020. No one, no one outside the base cares about that whatsoever. No one, no one wants to hear that. It's not an issue that motivates their lives. It's not relevant to them. Most people don't think the election was stolen because it wasn't. Uh, so they're like, is this party's brand so bad uh, that people can see through them? They're in their view, see through them and say, like, they're talking about crying. They got nothing else or not. And I think it's a, that's that's 
that's a bit of an open question, but look, there's been times when Wisconsin has like totally gone away from one party. It's remained really close. The governor has been leading throughout his race because he, he says, that, look, I'm the stability guy. Uh, I'm not that liberal. I'm not that left wing. Uh, I keep getting blocked by far right Republicans and look, they're even going further right. Do you really want them to take over and ruin everything? That's kind of been the argument that's kept him afloat. What are you seeing in, in, in Colorado? Because I feel like um, on the left side, the Democratic side, it ha- there hasn't been a ton of attention paid to it. And it seems like Bennett is doing well in the polls. But McConnell's been heaping praise on the Republican candidate O'Day uh, as he's like clearly just like, you know, low on someone like uh, Dr. Yeah. Oz, for example. But could that actually be in play for Republicans? Yeah, I mean, I've had a couple of Republicans tell me they wish they could just like do a untouchable jury swap and get their con- candidate in Washington and, and Colorado where they can't win and put them into New Hampshire and uh, Pennsylvania where they could. And a lot of them think that. I mean, but the thing with O'Day is like he won the primary as a pro-choice Republican. Very tough. They had not even have done it. Um, and there are long memories in Ohio. Uh, in, sorry, in Colorado of it, you know, in 2014, the Democrat runs on, please reelect me to save abortion rights. The Republicans say, that's crazy. Stop, you know, who, who are you to say they're going to take abortion rights? Well, they're gone now. Uh, so like you, it turns out, you know, once one Republican senator gets his term, votes to block Merrick Garland, et cetera. Uh, so Republic, Democrats have kind of held on to the idea that you need this as a bulwark against the far right. And they can do it in the state. Colorado just ton, has tons and tons of college educated white voters who are now incredibly democratic. So you've seen polling where just Republicans are doing pretty well. O'Day's image is pretty good, but they're bumping up against the ceiling um, of like, you know, 45%. We're just those voters in, in greater Denver and like Fort Collins and Boulder, just like, yeah, you know, I didn't, I'm not having a great time, but by, by no means do I want like put uh, Republic like Mitch McConnell in power. That's the sort of their problem in Washington state too, is like, do we have enough, and maybe they didn't over the summer. Maybe people were angry enough and there weren't any issues. It looked like Biden was flopping around. But the the combination of, hey, we're trying to do some things and those and those guys are led by crazy people, that is pretty compelling in these places with lots of college-educated white liberals. You know, people who, yeah, inflation hit them too. It's harder for them to buy a house. They have a bunch of problems that, that were not as bad maybe six years ago. But by no means do they want to wake up with Mitch McConnell blocking the Biden agenda. That's kind of their their trump card there. Is that is that is that new? Like, I mean, you, you've been doing this for, you know, uh, quite some time. Um, is that the the ability for Democrats to successfully and, and I guess we'll see if that works in Colorado, but anywhere to say, look, it doesn't matter if this guy is the next Susan Collins. The point is, is that she votes with Republicans. She allows Mitch McConnell to be there. And so it doesn't matter who this person is as an individual. They are a reliable Mitch McConnell vote. And that's all you need to know, because I feel like uh, Republicans have been fairly successful over the years with that formula. But Democrats haven't made that case or been able to make that case is that is 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 the idea of that resonating um like relatively new and is it are we there yet uh well the partisanship keeps increasing that's what's happening and so uh it was we're down to just a handful of places where uh saying i am not like other republicans or i'm not like other democrats can win i mean the the, the, the delta between like the best it's really Joe Manchin who's the best performing uh, Democrat in a Republican state by like by 20 30 points and after that you know you can at best maybe run 10 11 points uh, if you're if you're an incumbent and everybody knows you if you're a challenger it's very tough so introducing yourself as, as I hey I'm a guy you never heard of and I'm not like the other the other Republicans harder than it ever was uh, and I, I think that's what's happened to them in those states just like in some red states, like there were Democratic hopes of competing in like Missouri and competing in in, in uh, uh, North Carolina, and North Carolina is another good example. Or just after at some point, voters are so polarized, so partisan. They're watching Fox all day. They're they're listening to talk radio. They 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 blame the Democrat for everything their party uh, is associated with. It's so nationalized that just nobody's really breaking anymore. So that's why Republicans. 20 years ago, you know, you get the right candidate in Washington State or Colorado. Absolutely. You can you can flip a place like that. Uh, and they they love to talk about Virginia because 
like, yeah, if we get the right the right crew and the right issues, you can flip a state like Virginia. But that is, um, I wouldn't undermine what they what they what they pulled off there. And I think Youngkin gets a lot of help from just the media coverage. It was relentlessly pretty pro Youngkin. It was like this guy's new and exciting, has the yeah. best. But like in that election, Donald Trump shut up. Donald Trump wasn't coming for rallies. Donald Trump wasn't like in the news. He wasn't rebranding the party. The idea of uh, Roe going away was still pretty theoretical. Like just the environment has changed, and, and the economy is better. Uh, gas is cheaper. Just like things are better for Democrats, and the Republican Party has clearly moved further right since then. So I think those those issues have changed. A lot of people, and you're gonna, you're seeing this in Virginia today. If everyone is voting in Virginia for Congress, like they voted for governor, well, Democrats would be losing three of their members of Congress, but all of them are competitive for winning right now because voters who said, well, I'm gonna, you know, let's put Republicans in charge of the governor's office because I'm tired of some of this Democratic stuff. They don't think that way about Congress, not in the same way. All right. Well, much I know more you partisan, but hard to pull apart. Yeah, I know you got to catch a catch a plane. So uh, last question, uh, just tell us how many uh, how many seats the Democrats will pick up in the Senate. And uh, then we can wrap this up. Uh, I think it's if it's an incredible night for them. I think they'll net like one seat and they would take it if they had a 51 seat. Like because one question I've been asking that I, I may as not ask more is like of Republicans. Hey, if you have a majority, would you let biden confirm any judges i think the answer would probably be no you know like uh and so a huge difference for them either way and that issue has not come that that much but i think i think a great a great election for them would be uh they hold most of what they have maybe they flip two seats and lose lose nevada uh that's what i'd say now like d D plus one if things got much worse for them i think it's it could be like d minus three wow so uh you don't think there's any chance plus two uh, I think it's tough in this environment to imagine imagine that much. I mean, it. it I'm also chastened by the midterm elections have not been like presidentials. Like the, I mean, a lot of people looked really stupid when they were suggesting, "Hey, Mar-a-Lago got raided. That's going to rev up the base. That's going to be a unifying issue for Republicans." That's not how it worked. Uh, but I feel like it's going to be real tough to, um, to to do more than that. I mean, I think I think the fact that they're making Republicans spend as many places they are is going to help someone like uh, John Fetterman uh, get through there. But I think it's tough to imagine them gaining much more. Like holding Arizona, holding Georgia, losing Nevada, that would be a very good election for Republicans. Or for, for Democrats. Democrats. I should say. All right. Well, Dave Weigel, uh, always a pleasure. My understanding, are you switching jobs? You oh, yeah, that too. Uh, so I'm. Uh, this is my last day at the, at the Post. Today I'm, is? Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, happy <laughs> birthday. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I'm starting at Semaphore, which is this media startup that Ben Smith is starting. Benji Sarlo and I have on the show from NBC News, like just trying something new, trying like a, a new sort of news organization. Uh, I'm going to be doing the same stuff, like traveling around the country covering politics. But, you know, you, you, you like I've been doing this long enough where I never get bored, but I'm always thinking, I wonder if there's a new way to do the reporting we're doing, because every year more and more people hate the mainstream media. So what can we do differently? Uh, yeah, but I'm starting that uh, next week. So next so, time I talk to you, I'll be through that, and I'll be I'll have a yeah, new I'll have new stuff there that I'm new not, newsletter. I, for. I want to. We're still planning out that. My, my, my expectation is that I will. But every time I talk about this, people write write stories about me. So I'm like, I want them to write a story once everything is is ready. But yeah, I, you'll be among the first people to know like what I'm doing there. All right, folks, that's great. Stay uh, tuned. Yeah, that's right. come to me, and I will give you the inside dope on what's going on with Dave Wagner. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for so Appreciate much. Appreciate it.